All right, joining me in studio today on the Danny Picard Show is none other than UFC bantamweight and number one contender for the UFC bantamweight championship, Dominic Cruz. Dom, thanks for joining me today. What's going on, Captain? And you brought the crew, too. Yeah, I got the little roll dogs here with me. And the first thing you said was you were wondering what my last name was. Yeah. Because you're a big Star Trek fan. Well, and people do call me Captain Picard sometimes. I was trying to figure out if it was Picard with a W or an R. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it was correct because Captain Picard's kind of my hero. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love Star Trek. See, I'm not a big Star don't Trek guy, me. so I, I'm not judging, <laughs> but I don't usually like when people call me Captain Picard because I'm not a big Star Trek fan. Do but know, we do have the have little ever, figurine here in the studio. Have you ever seen it? Ever? I mean, I've seen it. Listen, Captain Picard's a problem solver, man. You need to be, you need to embrace the role. I, I guess. You should. Uh, I'm, I mean, most likely not going to do that. Where <laughs> could I find it these days? Where could I watch... Star Trek. Um, there's a there's a channel that constantly plays. I think it's BBC. You can watch it, and that's constant, where you watch it. Oh yeah, constant reruns. I've that's your go to number one show. Definitely. Star Trek. Well, no, not go to, but it's definitely up there. I mean, I grew up watching it because I had like four channels and uh, UPN eighteen in two, in uh, Arizona, and that like is one of the only shows I had mm -hmm. on my TV. I yeah. didn't have cable or nothing, so I just was religiously watching Star Trek. No kidding. Yeah. All right. So you did not think you were coming to talk to a Picard today? No, I had no clue. I no. mean, I'm delighted. Yeah. I mean, you've been going, making your rounds the last couple of days in Boston. Yes. And yesterday I saw you, you did a couple interviews sitting next to the guy that you're going to fight, TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, I mean, you get used to that, though. UFC's always cramming us in little areas and making us talk and stuff. So I was ready for He's it. He's not here today. No, he's in not. The, at least in this studio setting. But I can't even really imagine what that's like because... I try to put myself in your shoes, and I'm thinking, I'm going to fight this guy in January for a championship. Yep. I do not want to be doing an interview sitting right next to him. No, I, mean, I enjoy it. You it's, do? Yeah, I do. I enjoy it. It's, it's Is there fun. a hatred there at all? No, nah, hate. Wait, I keep saying this to everybody. It's like, I don't hate anybody. There's not one person in this world that I hate because hating is just taken from yourself. It's wasted energy. I, I try to explain that. When you hate somebody, you're just wasting your own energy on them. Mm -hmm. It's useless. So I more just enjoy the moment of embarrassing him. It's just fun. So what do you think? He, do you think he feels the same way? No, I'm pretty sure he hates me now. <laughs> oh, really? Because <laughs> of some things that you've said to him. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, I, he, he says, like, he has no ill will. He understands all, um, you know, I'm good at talking and this and that. But, I mean, he just can't talk. So it's got to suck for him. And you're good on the mic. I don't know if I go that far. I'm just being myself. This is, you know, I think that mm -hmm. it's just different. Like if you're either comfortable being yourself or you're trying to portray something that everybody wants you to be. And I'm comfortable being myself. And you have actually been lately in the media, kind of, right? Fox Sports 1, an analyst for Correct. them? Correct, yeah, What's yeah. that been like? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I love Fox. Fox takes care of me. I got a job with them. Um, I, I can move on and break down fights with them, you know, for my future, so... It's good to be working with them. They treat their employees great. And, uh, you know, without Fox, the UFC wouldn't be where it's at. Mm. Like, plain and simple. When I was fighting, we didn't have Fox. It was Versus still. And then yeah. they got rid of Versus and finally moved to Fox when I was hurt already after that happened. So I didn't get to take advantage of the Fox platform. And now, uh, with Fox, the sport has exploded. I mean, it's on every channel. You can't flip through the channels without seeing a UFC embedded, mm -hmm. a UFC fight somewhere, uh, reruns, whatever it might be. And... Uh, it, it's just Fox is pretty much what has made UFC what it is today. Your championship fight, January 17th. It is a Sunday. That is on Fox Sports 1. It's right here in Boston at the TD Garden. Uh, again, January 17th. Tickets go on sale tomorrow, right? Yep. November 20th. Friday, November 20th. Tickets yep. go on sale tomorrow. The TD Garden box office. You can also get them at Ticketmaster.com or by calling 1-800-745-3000. Uh, what do you think of Boston? You're going to be here in a couple months, so what do you think of it right now? Yeah, I have no issues with it. I mean, the people out here, I feel like I relate with them. I've said that on a few few interviews. You can kind of feel the, the smart-ass, for lack of a better term, yeah. in everybody out here, and uh -huh. I can appreciate that. I get that right away. <laughs> yeah. When I ask you if your headphones work, and you would kept asking, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? They have a button on the side, and I, I just needed to oh, you I went, needed to see if they were working. You for went it. for it, man. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I went for it. But you you know, here's one way you can't relate. And I know you used to play football because I was looking up your background. That's yeah. how you got the nickname, the Dominator, That's right? It. High school football, you were a linebacker. I, I so terrible. one way that me and you can't relate is that you, are you a Chargers fan? You're I from mean, San Diego? <laughs> yes. I okay, like the Chargers are yeah. two and seven yeah, and like the talking. Patriots are undefeated. Yeah, I can't relate. Really. We can't relate to that. 
you're right. You know, that is a good way to bash on me is with the sports and the football. Uh, the Chargers aren't doing very well. Hopefully I can bring the belt back and maybe I'll let the Chargers borrow it because that's probably the closest they're going to get to it right now. But you are a Chargers fan. That is your team? Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I have like a one particular team because I love watching football. Mm -hmm. I like the athletes. I like watching some of the best athletes in the world compete. Football, if you watch it and you break it down, it moves in a lot of similar lines and uh, parallel. it has a lot of parallels to mixed martial arts. If you look at the movements and the actions of the running backs and the quarterbacks, everything's on a vertical plane, you know what I mean? So yeah. um, I watch it for that reason. But I would say that if I had to pick a team, it would be the Cardinals or the Chargers. I'm from Arizona. Uh, that's where I was raised. But I was born in San Diego, and now I live in San Diego. And Chargers have been great to me. I mean, they give me gear when I need it. I, I get to go to the games. Um, it's pretty cool. All right, so you got to be nice to them right now. They might move to L.A., right? Yeah, that's... They're going to split a stadium That's with... another thing. It's sad because I was there at the game when the Raiders played the Chargers. Yeah. I was at that game, and I was just like, oh, my gosh. It was, it was rough. Raiders fans were killing everybody. Raiders are actually not bad. I mean, they <laughs> no, might... they're not. They're... They might make the playoffs this year. Yeah, it was, it was a sad thing because everybody knew that that game kind of was like, all right, is San Diego going to go to L.A. or mm -hmm. not? And then everybody's like, yeah, you guys are moving to L.A. You know I mean? <laughs> and all the, Char all the Raiders fans were going nuts. Yeah. I thought it was weird. That's, I, I feel bad, actually, for Chargers fans. But, I mean, that's that's what happens. They're looking to put teams in L.A. And the state, the pictures of the new stadium look pretty sick, too, though. Yeah, the, the thing is, time. I think the Chargers just got to throw, be willing to throw more money at the at the roster. Plain and simple, you got mm. you got to put some money in to compete with these high level teams. They, they they these other teams are putting a lot of money into it, and if you're not going to put money into the team, I mean, how do you how do you recruit good high level guys? Mm -hmm. So, um, tell me about what the last four or five years have been like for you, because obviously you never you've never lost the belt. Right? I mean, they had to make the interim champion, and then you got hurt again, and you were out from, what, 2011 to 2014? Something like that. And I, 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 I mean, I, what I is, stopped keeping track. What has this last four or five years been like for you? It's been hard, man. I mean, there's – the good thing about it is you learn to take ridicule very easily. Like, when you're out as much as I've been out and you've been hurt, you know, it's more about quality over quantity at this point. So – um, the good thing is I had a lot of fights in a short period of time. You know, I got up to 20 and one and a lot of guys don't even have 20 fights. So, sure. uh, I got the experience I needed. I did a lot of rounds in those title fights, which gave me a ton of experience at the highest level against the highest competition in the world. So I have the rounds, I have the experience I need, regardless of the fact that I've been out a long time. Being out a long time has actually kind of helped me because I've been able to rehab my body from all those title fights I had. When you're doing four title fights back to back and you go the distance on all of them, that's a lot of damage because the camp alone is, you know, eight to ten weeks. Mm. And you're taking damage in camp, uh, sparring two to three times a week, uh, wrestling two to three times a week, live, uh, jiu-jitsu, your arms are getting wrenched. I mean, just it, it puts a beating on your body, and the camp is the issue. The fights are the easy part. So to go out there and have a good fight and be able to go 25 minutes and not look tired, I mean, that takes hell in the, in the training sessions uh, leading up to those fights. Mm. So. I've been able to rehab my body. My elbows are feeling good. My knees are feeling great. Um, the rest of my body, I didn't take a lot of damage to my brain or my head over this past few years. So that I feel like that's all going to play in my advantage coming uh, in the near future now that my body's working for me. Speaking with UFC bantamweight, Dominic Cruz joins me in studio today on the Danny Picard Show. And uh, you mentioned not a lot of guys get to 20-1. and one. Not a lot of guys will come back from what you're coming back from. Yeah, I, I really believe that that's the hardest part. And you know what? You, when you go through the surgeries and the stuff that I've gone through and then coming back, fighting, winning, and then being out again for another year, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty heartbreaking. But you do get better at it, unfortunately. You do learn how to deal with the injury and just let go and realize you're hurt and there's nothing you can do about it and live your life anyways without that. So what it taught me is fighting isn't my life. It's just a piece of what I do, tiny piece of what I do. I have tons of things that I can touch other people around me with. I have tons of other facets and skills I can go to and um, that makes now fighting a cherry on top in my life instead of something that I have to have and have to do which is what it was before I didn't know what I would do without fighting before because I put all my eggs in one basket mm. trying to make a life for myself uh, trying to become a champion and then you know getting that championship getting those championships and then being hurt I learned to live a different style of life for the past few years without being a pro fighter. You know what I mean? And that's that wasn't easy. That was probably the hardest transition for me was learning 
who I am outside of fighting because it, it just took everything I had to get to that level in the first place. So I didn't really have time to figure out other facets of life when I was training and being a world champion. When I got hurt, I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. But you, I mean, being a world champion, I mean, that's what you're a fighter for, to become the world champion. That's why everybody's a yes, fighter. Yes, but you get that opportunity, and then it's just sort of taken away from you, knowing that you never actually lost the belt. I mean, does that piss you off? No, I can't piss you off because, you know, the thing is, what good does anger and being mad do for me? Like, how does that solve a problem? How does that fix me? How does that fix the injury? It doesn't. All it does is frustrate you. You might train too early and then get hurt again. So what you do is you just let go. Let go of the things you can't control. Mm. Live a different life. And then, you know what? When you do that, the fight, the passion is still going to be there. And here I am again, just because I was able to let go. I was able to let go. And it didn't mean that I didn't want it any, more, any less. It just meant that I was going to get to come back to it eventually. And I did. And now here I am fighting for the title again. Uh, are you, uh, and this might be a stupid question, but I, I have something else to ask after, you know, one fight at a time, you have this fight, let's say you win the belt. I think UFC fans, they want to see you get in the octagon with your eye of fable one, one more time. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't blame them. I mean, they, I mean, that's the fight that needs to happen. Who right. Who doesn't want to see Faber get beat up? Let's be <laughs> real. Who doesn't want to see that? You know I mean? Um, well, the thing is with Faber, he's been close a lot but not quite there. And I'm sure, I know he hates me for saying that over and over and over, but I mean, the proof is in the pudding. He's just not done it. He hasn't been able to beat people. And then you hear TJ Dillshaw throw him under the bus, supposed to be his brother, his teammate, all this and all that. And just yesterday he's saying, I've been beating up Faber for four years <laughs> and, all, and all those teammates there at Alpha Fail. And I'm just like, whoa, man, you yeah. just threw all your team under the bus like nothing and now you're at elevation. I guess you're the man. So... To me, it's just interesting. I feel like Faber should be more mad at uh, TJ than me because I only beat him once. I mean, TJ beat him for four years. But that fight, that's going to happen. I at, don't at see some why point. I wouldn't. I mean, the thing is, Faber's got to get some wins. He's fighting Francisco Rivero. Uh, no. No, he's fighting He's fighting a good wrestler. He's got a, a, a tough fight coming up with a good mm. wrestler from Arizona. Um, Frankie Sines from Arizona is who he's fighting next. Okay. And he's got to win that. And that's a tough fight for Frankie. Because of the submission game of Faber. Faber's got good submissions, and uh, Frankie usually looks to wrestle. So that's why they match that up. But uh, he's got to get some wins. I mean, I am I plan on going and winning the title. So I guess I'd, I go win the title, and what, I just gift him another, what, a tenth shot at the belt? Eh. Oh, so if you win the title, you're not going to give him if, a shot right if, away. What's all this if all right. stuff? And I'm not even worried about looking past nothing. You know, TJ's a, a formidable champion right now. He's just not as good as me, and I look forward to beating him. That's the guy I want to beat right now. That's the guy who's been talking, saying he's going to knock me out in two rounds. That's the guy I got some, you know, something to hand to. I, I, I got a beating to, to serve him. Yeah, but you kind of just hinted. And, all right, we'll say when. When you win the championship. Yeah. You kind of hinted around maybe he has to get a couple more wins to actually get Listen, in with I'm is, that, a, is that up to you, or I'm is that not? It's not up to me. I'm not opposed to fighting Faber. He wouldn't I'll be a mandatory him. challenger, right? I'll fight him right? right now in the street. I don't care. Like, I don't care who I fight. The point is, the person to fight is TJ Dillshaw, and that's what I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, that's the guy to fight. I hear what you're saying. Everybody wants to see me fight him. I don't mind fighting him. Faber wouldn't mind fighting me. So why wouldn't the fight happen if we both don't like each other? Yeah. We're both at a high level. We're both in the same weight class. But let it come together. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it'll happen organically, just like me fighting for the title has happened organically, even though I've been out four years. Yeah, well, you deserve to get the title shot, obviously, because you never actually lost the belt. And the reason I asked that, the mandatory challenger stuff, is because, interesting, in, in the boxing world, there's something going on right now. Are you going to watch Cotto Canelo Definitely. this week? Oh, this weekend? Yeah. Um, because Cotto just got the belt taken away from him, the WBC. Yeah, I, I read about that. And I don't know what because the he didn't, deal is Because he didn't want to pay a $300,000 sanction to actually put it on the line against Canelo. Why do you have to pay because, money to put it on the line? Because their side is saying they paid $800,000 to skip fighting Golovkin. Because Golovkin is the mandatory challenger for You can pay Cota. to not have fights? So they had to pay to skip that to get the Canelo fight. That's weird. So that's why I was asking you, when you get into a situation, you know, when when you win a belt, well, I'm not mandatory pay a challenges I'm not you know, pay. to skip... I don't make enough money to be paying people to not fight people. P plain and simple. Yeah. If I'm lucky, you fight who's next. Listen, if I'm lucky, I could make 200 grand off this fight. 
You just talked about him paying eight hundred grand and not fight just somebody. Just to skip Golovkin. Come I mean, on, I don't man. blame him. Who wants to fight Golovkin? But uh, I'll fight Golovkin for eight hundred grand, man. <laughs> I'm about to make two hundred grand and fight a guy with kicks, elbows, knees, takedowns, everything. Come on, man. MMA is where it's at. These are the toughest guys in the world. We're talking about boxing, where they're paying guys to skip people. That's how much money they have. Mm. Get out of here. That's. I don't even want to talk about that. You just made me angry talking about that. So, the, that. but the boxing. <laughs> The, the boxing and the UFC thing. I, I ask all the UFC guys. I ask the boxing guys, and they all sort of say the same thing. Like, those guys couldn't do what we do, and maybe we mm. couldn't do what they do. What, what's, what's we your are fear? doing what they're doing. Yes, they're doing it at a higher, more technical, artistic level in mm. boxing. Yes, they are. But that's because that's all they have to focus on. Let me just focus on boxing. I swear to God I could get to that level, especially my entire life since I'm 10. That's all you did. Okay? Well, I had to wrestle from 10 years old until I was 19, start boxing at 19 years old, start kicking at 23 years old, and then start doing judo and jiu-jitsu from then on out. Those are all how many different martial arts that I had to pick up over 15, 10, 11 years of time while they got to focus on one art and one art only. Mm -hmm. Of course they're going to be good at it. Of course, of course. I mean, it's common sense. You put the time in. But I promise you, if they decided to start wrestling, they would embarrass themselves in no matter how many years they try to do it. What about when wrestlers, professional wrestlers, come into the octagon? What's your reaction to that? Like CM Punk. I had Doomsday Howard, who you guys said might even be dropping by today because okay. this, you know, this is his neighborhood in Dorchester. Right. Um, I had him in here a couple weeks ago in the seat you're sitting in, and I asked him about CM Punk, and he said he wants to fight him, basically called him out. He wants to fight with CM Punk. But how do you feel about WWE guys thinking they can get into the octagon and be successful. How do you feel about that transition well, those guys is, try to make? It doesn't like that. None of it bothers me. People who think they can transition and cross over, what's the problem with that? That's the beautiful thing about the sport is, okay, we'll call WWF or WWE Pro Wrestling a different type of martial art. Let's call it that. You've been doing it for how long? Well, call, fine, call it a martial art. Mm. How will that be useful in a fight? That's the question. Let's find out with CM Punk. Why not? Why not? He's got the fan base. He's going to put people in the seats more than pretty much most fighters. And that's why people are calling him out because he's a money fight. Because if he brings all the fans and you get to take his, you get to fight him with those fans, it's yeah. like you just come up. It's a win win for Howard. It's a win win for any fighter who gets that fight with CM Punk because chances are it's not going to be that tough of a fight depending on what he's practiced. So do you think Dana White and Vince McMahon are in cahoots? Why wouldn't they be? Amazing? That's, that's what I say. Why wouldn't you be? Yeah, if there's money to make, there's money to make. He's a, Dana's a businessman. You know? um, let's, let's look at it this way. Who's making the money? The fighters, Dana White or Lorenzo? Dana White and mm -hmm. Lorenzo are making the money. Why? Because apparently that's the harder job than fighting. It must be. If they're making the money, promoting fights, having building the stage, putting that cage up, getting the arena, talking to the people of the, each state all over the world – getting sanctioned everywhere must be harder than going in that cage and fighting. That's the only thing I could think of because they're the ones making the money, not us. Yeah, I mean, I, I said the same thing. I think they'd be crazy. Some people try to tell me, no, it's just coincidence. They got guys going this and that. I say no. The reason you see Ronda Rousey in the ring at WrestleMania is because they have something going, but they'd be stupid if they didn't and try to promote each other. It would make sense not to do it, so I think it's a great business strategy. But, I mean, I can't mention all that and say Ronda Rousey and not get your thoughts on what you saw last weekend in the Rousey home fight. Home knocking her out with a kick to the face in the second round. Did you watch that live, first yeah. of all? You did. Yeah, I watched and it. And what, what was your reaction to that? Well, I mean, I was pretty shocked at the way it happened just because Ronda visualized it on Jimmy Fallon. You know, and it just, I look at it from, diff from a different perspective as a fighter that what she spoke, she made happen. Think about that. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Was it Jimmy Fallon or was it? It was Jimmy oh, Fallon. Yeah, it was Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy yeah, Fallon. she was on there and she said uh, she's going to keep the distance, keep the range, frustrate me, and then high kick me in the head. And it's like, whoa, you literally spoke the game plan. Mm. You thought it. You epitomized it. You made it real in your head right there to millions of people across the world. And that's something that everybody in the world should really look at. Start speaking what you want to happen because it can happen. If you want something positive to happen, say it. Yes, I'm the champion of the world. Yes, I'm the best 135-pounder uh, on planet Earth. Yes, I'm going to school silly dilly on January 17th in Boston at TG Garden. You know what I mean? It's like, why not? Why not say it? 
Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's what I get from that. We, but I mean, every I was shocked that Rousey lost the fight, and I guess the way I look at it is, again, from a business perspective, is was that good for business for the UFC? And was it good Absolutely. for her? It was. It was great for business, not good for her. It was great for business in the UFC because now it's proven that anybody in this sport, once again, can lose. We've seen Chuck Liddell fall. That guy was the man. He still is the man. But we've seen him fall. We've seen Matt Hughes fall. We've seen Gracie fall. We've seen Ronda Rousey fall. Everybody can fall. The, the only depressing, sad, sickening part to me is the way fans and people are treating her after a fall. Because it's a, it's a matter of time that everybody's going to fall in this What do you sport. mean? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean the tweets, the memes, the she's, she's not what she used to be. Like, just It's trippy how people turn on you when you lose. Uh, everybody and their mom loved Ronda Rousey. And now... They don't. But there was definitely this cockiness about her that, like you just said, is okay. It is it's, okay to have. Well, this is the thing. Cocky or confident. I, I'm going to say there's a fine line between those two things. Mm -hmm. And I will say that the general public who doesn't fight for a living in a cage will look at something like that and say she's cocky. I'll say she had the confidence she needed to go in there and try to beat a, a world champion in several martial arts, kickboxing and boxing. If you don't have that kind of confidence... Uh, you're really going to get beat up like she did. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that that's – it wasn't her mind that got her beat up. It was uh, just the style that she was facing. And I think that she does need to pick up some things in her striking, obviously. That was proven. But this, this, what, this is one of those things that you can't just judge R Ronda on this, on this fight completely and just say she's not what she was made out to be, in my I opinion. I wanted to see her be, you know, the unbeatable one in UFC. And, and you know, it was bad for her because now making appearances and everything, I mean, can she even do that yeah, with the same mystique? Fine. I'm going to tell you something. I've lost too. And uh, when I lost, it made me better. It, the two things happen when you lose. You either crumble under the pressure and the thought of the loss or you explode and grow from it. And this is going to tell, really tell you the type of champion that Ronda is because a champion isn't always the winner. You know, a champion is the guy who can come back from, or a female, excuse me, from the worst possible issues, and they can come back and make something out of it. Uh, it's it's adapting. She's got to adapt, and she, I think that she has the mind to adapt. Um, it's a question of how long is it going to take for that to come together, because that's one of those things that you have nightmares about what she went through. It, you really, that's something you never forget, and it'll change you for the rest of your life. It does. It, it's that effective fighting is you're putting that much on the line when you're going out there to fight in front of millions of people and that's something nobody in this world will understand because they're eating popcorn and drinking a beer and screaming nonsense at us but really everything in our life is on the line with each fight i'm literally when i go out there and fight tj i'm fighting for my life i'm fighting for my livelihood I'm fighting for my manhood i'm fighting to give my mom a better home so she doesn't got to live paycheck to paycheck anymore um and 200 grand probably won't do that but it'll help all right, he is Dominic Cruz. UFC Fight Night, Dillashaw vs. Cruz will air live on Fox Sports 1 Sunday, January 17th. Coverage begins at 8 o'clock Eastern Time with prelims beginning at 5.45 Eastern Time on UFC Fight Pass. And again, tickets for UFC Fight Night on Fox Sports 1 January 17th go on sale tomorrow, Friday, November 20th. Uh, you can get them at the TD Garden box office, also at Ticketmaster.com, or by calling 1-800-745-3000. That's 1-800-745-3000. Uh, Dominic, thanks for coming in today. Uh, thanks to Kim Ring for sitting next to you, bringing, bringing you by, uh, bringing the crew in, and uh, wish you the best of luck. Good luck, Captain Picard.